Good morning. Yesterday <clears throat> wasn't a beautiful day like this. It wasn't really raining as such, uh, just windy and, and a bit on and off. And so yesterday afternoon I set myself up and trimmed the hedge on our western and northern boundaries. Well, I trimmed most of it. Um, it's not a task that I enjoy particularly because I'm up on top of the pergola on the plank and yeah, just all of those things. I'll, I won't video me doing it but I'll show you what I did yesterday. I'll stitch that in about here somewhere. The bit that I did yesterday afternoon is from this corner just here all the way up here and across the top and also I did uh, behind the uh, summer house as well as far as the kopai tree. <clears throat> that was what I did yesterday afternoon uh, and it just got a bit late to do the rest of it so I'm pleased that I left it till today. So this morning I want to get the job completed and all the trimmings into the trailer to ready to take away. And if you look around here you will see the view that I have, well behind me really, but it's an absolute stunner of a day. You can see the autumn colours starting to show now and uh, yeah lovely not a cloud in on oh, no, it yep there is there's a cloud over there hardly a cloud in the sky and certainly not any clouds that are going to bring us any precipitation all right i need to crack on with this This hedge is all on the neighbour's property. The building you can see in the corner is actually the garage, not the house. This property has had a succession of owners over the time that we have been here. We bought the piece of land that is on our north side from the people who owned this property when we first moved. Well, actually, no, it was a little time after we moved. We bought it probably late 1980s. They were retired orchardists. It is a large house on top of the hill with a large property. There were sheep on much of it when we first came and it has expansive views across Hawke's Bay. After a number of years those owners, being older, moved to something smaller. The people who bought it from them separated not many years after buying it so it was sold again. The next owner was there for a year or so but then went to prison for fraud so they weren't there long either. They had some rather vicious pit bull type mongrels so they put a six foot high chain link fence around some of the property to contain the dogs. The next owners were the ones who planted the hedge trees all the way around the boundary. On the sloping bit going up the hill is where the chain link fence is and it's now buried in the hedge on our side which makes trimming that a bit more tricky. They had a gardener who used to keep the hedge trimmed on the top and on their side so that was good. The current owners do not trim the hedge so unless I do it, it just grows higher and higher, which is not ideal from our perspective because it shades us. They don't seem to mind that I trim it, but it is a bit of a pain having to do it every year.
You may be a little bemused by the title of the video. Well, the demon part at least. Subsequent to cutting the hedge, I undertook a bit of research and have worked out that it was February 2022 when I last trimmed this hedge. I know the specific date because of an event that was part of it. Last time, as I came towards the end of the hedge, down near the house, I needed to move the plank on top of the pergola. I put the pole trimmer down on the plank, which proved to be not a good plan, balanced myself on the cross member of the pergola and tried to move the plank. The outcome of this rather risky move was that the pole trimmer fell off the plank and started to descend to the ground, battery in first, but not before pivoting itself on the cross member and spinning around in the vertical plane at great speed. I moved my head and body out of the way, but alas, my knee felt the full force of the prongs of the cutter as the trimmer continued on its journey to the ground. As the wound wasn't bleeding much and I wanted to get the job finished, I carried out on and did so. That however proved to be my second mistake, as the knee swelled significantly and became extremely painful, as in feeling faint and nausea type pain. I retreated inside. After some TLC from the family position, i.e. ice, medication and elevation for a time, the pain eased but I was out of action for a couple of days. Fast forward to now and I confess that the thought of going back up on the pergola and doing it all again this year was in some ways facing the demon to some extent. I was a bit nervous about it, which is in part why I started at that end this time just to get that bit out of the way. It is the trickiest bit due to the slope of the land and obviously the pergola. Thankfully, it was uneventful this time. It is now done and all of the clippings are in the trailer. I will empty that on Thursday because um, other parties are taking the trailer away over Easter weekend. Good to have it done. Time to go and have a cup of tea. Actually, it might be a cold coffee, I think. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Yesterday, I spent most of the day working on stormwater and water reticulation for 73A. <clears throat> Uh, one of the issues that I had was that the stormwater, which actually serves both houses, uh, was blocked part way down the drive. I suspected that what had happened was that when that stormwater got broken during the cyclone, it broke down right next to the drive basically, uh, and then all the wash that was coming down off the slip well, not all the wash, but some of the wash that was coming down off the slip was then able to get into that the open end of that stormwater. And I was suspicious that that was what had caused it to block. So yesterday I went to Helena Hydraulics, which I have to say is a, a great company in Hastings, in Hastings Street actually, north. And I've dealt with them for over quite a number of years and to do with my water blaster rather than hydraulics uh, and I knew that you could buy a little attachment to go on the end of the water blaster hose specifically for clearing drains and so I went in there and he said well what hose is it going on to what fitting is it going on to I said uh, one that you made a few years ago he said mm, that's not a lot of help uh, and so he gave me the fitting for the end, but then also gave me a couple of other fittings uh, that of different sizes that meant that whatever size thread was on the end of my hose, I was going to have what I needed. And then I just took back the ones I didn't need today, and he'll give me a credit for those. So anyway, the little attachment is this little bit here. And so what it has is, it, it, in the end here, there is a jet, and then there are three jets that come out 
from underneath here and shoot backwards down this way. Uh, so there's, you know, there's spread, what's 3 into 360? 120. So they're 120 degrees apart. And basically you set your water blaster going and then you shove this up the pipe and it will burrow its way through the whatever's in there, the sediment that was in there. Initially I tried to go from the bottom, but when you're trying to push 20 meters plus of water blaster hose up, it kind of gets to a point where it doesn't work. So then I decided, well, I'll try from the top end, and that worked wonderfully. So it took quite a while to clean, clear out all the stuff that was in there, but I could see it all coming out on the bottom end, so that's fine. And I will show you in another part of the video where I went in from both ends and all the bits that came out at the bottom. So I carried on after that trying to reinstate things and ran into a couple of problems which I went into town this morning as part of a, a while, longer trip because I had to go over to empty the trailer and so I've got now more fittings and things that I need. So let's go and crack on with that and hopefully get all of that stormwater water, drainage all sorted because it's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow and Saturday and I really want this sorted before then so let's crack on with that from where the pipes come down the hill to this point here further down the driveway is almost 30 meters and fortunately I do have a 20 meter uh, hose for my water blaster plus the one that originally came with it which I think is 10 or 15 meters must be 10 so I had enough to almost reach all the way down here so yesterday what I did was I broke into this pipe here so from here and up to there I managed to lift the pipe enough to be able to get those out because those ones, again fortunately, aren't glued. I mean it's not going to go anywhere because it's held captive um, and so it was a good thing that it wasn't glued. I mean I could have cut it again as I've had to do in the past here and, and put more fittings in and things like that but I was pleased I didn't have to do that. And all of this stuff here that you can see is what washed out of the pipe and so that very definitely has come from up the top where we'll go back up to. When I attacked this yesterday, oh, said he kneeling on the concrete. So this piece of pipe wasn't in here. There was a this pipe continued down and I'd broken into this to let the stormwater that comes down there out so that it could come out into the gutter because it was below this point that it was blocked. So I remedied all of that glued in a new piece, fixed it all up. What I hadn't realized was, was that this had got broken as part of the original issue. And so when I went to put the pipe back in here, this all flew apart, which I decided at that point that I'd had enough of this for that day because I needed to go and purchase another Y joint. So today's work is to cut this out I've already cut that end of it, cut this out and put new in here and also get the piece in here that goes up there for the stormwater to connect to. Now I have to be really careful cutting this because below here, under here, are both the water pipes. Um, so there's one there and that's the other one that I, I, I did all of this pipe work yesterday so that that is now ready for that's ready for the pipe to go up the hill to 73A. That will happen next week. And also I'm going to replace this white one here also with the black and blue line. Um, and I have all the fittings for that. I don't have enough pipe but that's okay we can sort that out next week. So I'll crack on and get this job done. It shouldn't take too long <laughs> he said. And we'll see how we go. 
The reason I mentioned the need to be careful is that yesterday when I came down to repair the stormwater and install the tap in the water line, I discovered that previously, as in weeks ago I think, I had accidentally cut the water line under the stormwater when I was working trimming back the broken branch line of the stormwater that goes up the slip. It was a bit comical really as I put the fitting and the tap on the end of the pipe and then went down and turned on the toby at the street. As I was walking back up the hill there was a reasonable stream of water coming down to meet me. I realised something was amiss. Once I had walked back up to this spot and it took me a few seconds to realise that the bit of pipe I had attached the tap to, though it went into the ground, was not connected to anything. Back down the hill to turn off the toby and start again. When I tried to lift the stormwater pipe a bit to access the pipe underneath it, the stormwater pipe just immediately broke the fitting. As I said before, I gave up on the stormwater at that point and concentrated on sorting out the water line. I like this little pull saw for cutting the pipe. This is particularly so where you can't or shouldn't use a powered saw of any sort. It is much easier to use as the saw cuts on the pull stroke rather than on the push stroke. I used the grinder to remove a couple of bits of the legacy Y fitting that were still glued to the end of the pipe that was going to go into the new Y fitting. Making sure the pipework is clean and dry and giving it a rub with emery tape all helps the glue to adhere. I intentionally did not use the fast set glue as I wanted time to manipulate things after putting them together. Different manufacturers, I would say. It's an Iplex one, nothing on that one, anyway. This one will slide nice and easily over this, which is what I need. Whereas these ones that I bought today, they're a bit tight, which would make my life more difficult. So I shall use this one. And the reason that's important is because I need to be able to have that down there and then slide it up once I have this in place.
Here we go. Done. I can now go back up the top and continue with the water line up there that I was doing yesterday. The reason I'm not going to connect this overflow into there at this point is because I want to not have that in the way when we're bringing the the new septic line down. Um, it's going to be just going to be easier if the stormwater is easily movable while we do that septic line. Ultimately that overflow will disappear altogether and there'll be rigid PVC going up there but <clears throat> that won't be until after the uh, sewer and water lines are done. Right on to the next thing. We are now at the end of the working outside day. Uh, you would have seen what I did with the storm water down below. My intention was to film some of what I've done up here, but that went completely out of my mind. And that's okay. Um, in part because it's pretty dark where I was working and trying to get reasonable videos uh, can be a bit frustrating. So I will now show you what I have done up here over the last couple of days. So we are next to 73A, so the trench goes in here. I haven't put that pipe in because there's no point at this, at this juncture. So what I have done is I have plumbed the outlet of the filter set. Now the reason I have done that the way I have is so it comes out of the filter set and then goes around so there's a tap there and you'll see there's a valve above that T. The reason I've done that is so that when I put new filters in you need to run them for about 20 minutes to make sure all the excess carbon has gone out of the carbon filter and so I always set them up like this so that it's really easy to to drain that off and then that then heads in under the house and will connect into the existing system. On the inlet side, it's going to come along in the trench here and then come in down the bottom there. So I put a T in there and that pipe heading into the building if you like, that comes out up the other end, comes out up there so just there and then it goes up to an outside tap that means that both those outside taps are not going through the filter and they don't need to go through the filter uh, the only <clears throat> reason that the filter is there is to really to knock the chlorine out and uh, and so we don't need to do that for what's going to be used outside and then inside here, so this is where it comes in. I've, I've saddled it in a couple of places and I've left a reasonable length on here so that it can go either in here or in here or in here. So we'll decide that when the plumber's here and we'll also disconnect this at that time as well. So that now basically has that organised and uh, I also ran the pipe just to see how much I had so I have run that all the way down the bottom down there and up here so I have more than enough to get to our house but I will need to purchase another roll to um, to feed 73A so I don't know whether it comes in 15s, 20s, 30s I'll find that out 
because um, if I could get a 15 that would probably be ideal because I will have excess left over from what I already have and I can just join it uh, we'll see okie dokie so I hope you've enjoyed tagging along with the journey and uh, I'll see you next time oh have a great Easter by the way uh, when will I send this out? Yeah. Easter may be over. It depends how much time I get. But it doesn't look like we're going to be doing much outside for the first couple of days anyway. It is supposed to rain considerably. But we don't usually let a little bit of rain stop us. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Bye.